Hello ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the channel, Ralph's Automotive. Today I'm working on a 2002 Ford Explorer Sport Track. This one's got 4 liter V6. I did jump the gun on this truck. Wasn't really planning on making a video, but going to anyway. Uh, we pulled it in and I wanted to I looked at scan data let me back up I looked at scan data on it and um, we had heater co uh, O2 heater coat we had uh, number six cylinder misfire and uh, there was some other odd end codes I don't even remember now that was that was yesterday uh, last night to be exact um, I've noticed I went to the data screen and I noticed right off the off the bat that the O2 on the bank 2 bank 1 I'm sorry bank 1 the O2 on the bank 1 sensor 1 was not responding at all it showing a static uh, I think it was like something like a 90 millivolt something like that it was static you know revving it nothing no changes that's also the one that that had the heater the heater problem so I pulled because I can and the information was right there you know to be had I went over here to the computer uh, back probed into the computer harness and get you a shot of that a little bit slow today but I just back probed right there into the computer harness because it's so easy to get to I wanted to make sure that there is no signal uh, going into the computer and there wasn't so we took let me get you over here I took the wheel off of this truck on the passenger side bring you along let me get this light and normally there is a rubber fender liner in here that is also not in there anymore Sorry about that. The oxygen sensor lives right there. Right there is the socket. Easy to get out. It plugs in back behind the head. I can't get you in there. Uh, it's easy. A little push tab. Unplug it. Uh, first thing we're going to do here is check the oxygen sensor. We're going to replace it before I even get into the, the misfire on the number six, six cylinder. The six, number six cylinder is actually on the other bank. It's up front here. It is one, two, three, four, five, six. On, uh, four, five, six being on the driver's side. So what, I, what I'm doing right now is we can check this and hopefully well hopefully I can prove it out that that the oxygen sensor is bad because uh, we need to know uh, we want to know I should say I know it's bad but it doesn't matter thinking you know and knowing is also two different things so guys what I've done here is a little bit of a bench test okay there's our old uh, oxygen sensor and right now we are back probed into the bear with me trying to get the latch undone here nothing ever cooperates when you're trying to show something Make sure that you get this right here. 
Yeah, I think we can see this. Um, yeah. Okay. Uh, right now, if you look, well, if you look at your colors, the light colors, like in this case here, there is a white and a white and a gray and a black. The heater is mostly your light colors and we've got the ohm meter set to make a sound when there is continuity and as you can see there is nothing there now we we'll grab a new one out of the box again we look at the light colors or the like colors I'm sorry like colors are here in the front we stick a probe in there I'm trying not to touch the leads together or else it will it will show continuity but anyway Uh, can't even get it in there. Okay, we just connect these here again. We are in the front. I don't know if the camera will pick it up, but we are on the white white colors. There you go, guys. This heater circuit here is alive. I'll move on. I'm going to prove this out real quick. I'm not going to make too big of a story out of it. Now we'll go to the gray and the black. There's black. There's the gray. Can't show you this. Sorry. Go to I don't have millivolts on this. Go to the voltage screen. Go up here. We'll hold this in place. It's zero. Now I take a propane and heat this up. careful you don't want to get it so hot that it, that you damage it absolutely no change and I'm just doing it because I can basically we're playing a little bit so again we're on the black and the gray. All right, start heating it up a little. Ah, sorry about that, I'm losing connection here. Sorry about that, must have had a bad connection here. We see in point one, two, three, four. Be careful, don't mess the oxygen sensor up, but we've seen all the way up to point eight. And as it cools back down, of course, it's going to drop back down. So that's verified working. I'm going to try to show this. 
and by the way let me just tell you this this has absolutely nothing to do well uh, once again I said said that wrong uh, as of right now you know this may not have anything to do with the misfire but the oxygen sensor is bad bank one is not a good sensor to have ba uh, bank one sensor one is not a good sensor to have going bad It did have anises on the thread. I'm going to try to reach in here and uh, plug this unit back in. And I may have to move the camera in, in order to do this. Odds are all you're seeing is my head right now. I had to clip it. There's a little metal clip back there. I had to clip the plug back in it. That's what I was doing. So that's hooked back. See, it's attached to the head back there. So we've got it hooked back up in its original place where it's supposed to be. So we're not going to run the truck very long because uh, the customer complaint on it is that the truck runs bad when it's cold and um, I haven't checked that of course as soon as it warms up it starts running fine get you back out of here all right guys ladies and gentlemen this here in the middle is cylinder number six I guess we should take just a second to, uh, to verify that let's see if we get the firing order here off of all data that is in fact correct that is the number six location now, I accidentally forgot to turn the camera on a while ago. I started it up for just a few seconds. Now, I have verified my oxygen sensor. It was switching perfectly fine. I have the uh, computer hooked up to it over there on the other side. I'm not going to show it. Take my word for it. It's switching perfectly fine. It took it just a few seconds, and it started switching which it did not do yesterday so that in fact was a problem on it but I've noticed right off the bat now we're going to do this low tech I've only got a small window here so I have to hurry up Once again, O2s were switching. As we've noticed, the cylinder does not contribute anything. I did a relative compression test yesterday, but I failed to do it a while ago. So we can do that now and see what this sounds like. Okay, here we go. Really, that don't sound too bad. I didn't hear anything abnormal. I don't hear a cylinder missing out. As even as it sounds, 
there is almost no need in uh, checking compression we can rule out a spark plug we can go to the number five and pull number five change it out with number six yeah we can do that we can uh, switch some plugs out it's actually really easy to do on this truck if for some reason there's something wrong with the plug that should follow the light on the camera keeps going coming on and going off so in case you're wondering what that is really small window hopefully it doesn't quit uh, to run bad still shaking this one is contributing happening he did tell me yesterday that it doesn't take very long for it to start running smooth okay I'll switch the wires so five will be our six six will be our five switch them down here okay start the thing back up So what do we know? Once again, switch them on the bottom. We need direction. I have a look at these injectors here. Oh my god, they're hard to see. Matter of fact, even with the light, I can't see nothing. So as of right now, we know that our ignition should be working just fine. We changed the plugs, we changed the wires. We know all that stuff is good. Injectors are hidden over here in the crud.
Okay. What are you doing? What? What? What are you doing? What I thought. <laughs> So, that wire is underneath the coil pack. I'm gonna have to undo the coil pack, but uh, I'm also thinking, since I've already got the cover off the computer over there, the computer wire anyway, I might just tie into that and let's see if we got injector pulse. And we'll have to print print us out a connector view for that so bear with me okay so turn that camera just a little bit more okay guys so what I'm doing here is I, I hate to keep messing around with this because it, it will not be that long and the truck is going to start running right but what I'm doing here is uh, where's my paper uh, my paper is missing now good god uh, anyway I'm back probing into the main computer bear with me what in the world okay so let me zoom out of here we can actually see this uh, injector control injector number four control is pin 100 injector number six control is pin 99 currently I'm plugged into uh, pin 100 it's right there I'm gonna do this one more time because I'm not 100% for sure that the uh, pin is touching real good. I was about, temp about half tempted to back probe on that. I'll get you over here. Get you on that screen. I said we are on... Uh, If this don't turn out this time, uh, I'm going to use a screen recording next time, but uh, I think we can see this. As I was saying, this is um, uh, in, uh, injector number four, the control side of it I'm plugged into. Okay, so we have a good injector signal on that we got control I'm not going to take camera around with me but uh, I'm gonna keep you here I'm gonna switch it back over to pin 99 back probing always one of them iffy things you don't really 100% for sure know that you're actually touching but I think we are So we have something. So there you go guys. So we don't have uh, a good control on that injector. So uh, by the looks of that, which I've seen that before, the computer is actually trying to control that injector but uh, there is something the matter with the injector I'm sure uh, what we can do is uh, tap on that injector but as I stated before uh, unfortunately I'm gonna have to remove the coil uh, bracket to get to that injector I'm gonna do that off camera it's doesn't matter a couple of bolts so you know get that bracket off of there get the coil unbolted and uh, 
see if I could even reach that injector right there with something like a screwdriver or something like that and we'll tap on it and see if by tapping on it 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 will come back come back alive okay we got a little bit of change of plans uh, it's not by any means difficult to get all of it apart but uh, I am going to try to help this fellow out a little bit. He don't want to spend a whole lot of money on the truck, and he's a, he's a mechanic himself. So uh, we decided to go ahead and just own the injectors. And uh, what he's going to do is he's got a severe valve cover leak. He's going to fix all that, and he's going to pull the, the injectors out and drop them off over here so I can own them out for him. And uh, it's... More than likely, you know, because when, when the thing warms up, it, it smooths out, and I guarantee you if we leave it running now, we'll, we'll see it working just perfectly fine. But, uh, you know, I'm leaning toward the injector being bad. I've seen it, like I said before. I've seen it before. Uh, but I'm going to end the video right here. I don't know if I will save it. Or whatever because I, I don't think that he is going to come back because uh, he is probably going to put the injector in himself if I was guessing at it I don't know that you know I don't know what all he wants me to do but uh, I will be testing that injector and uh, I may uh, I may make a short video of just on the the process of owning them out I don't know that I will or not to tell you the truth because I mean, there's already videos out there that shows you how to do it but uh, for now we're gonna end the video right here guys appreciate you watching thumbs up thumbs down whatever subscribe if you don't uh, if you haven't done so you know give us a like or dislike you know either either one is fine thanks for watching